an exciting combination between style, health tracking functions and remarkable battery life is the new Amazfit Active, which aims at bringing you the best budget Apple Watch alternative. Is it any good? Let's inspect! Hey, welcome! Great to meet you, I'm the Tech Mishka, and if you hear about the brand Amazfit for the first time, let me present you the model Active. It's a smartwatch which is supposed to be better than a fitness tracker, has an inbuilt GPS, and is supposed to bring you decent features at a not too expensive price. For those of you who are familiar with Amazfit's portfolio, I think we should make it clear that this is a hybrid between last year's GTS and the GTS Mini series, makes me try to extract the best out of these, keep a reasonable price and provide as many features as possible. And because I like testing wearables a lot, this has been on my wrist for more than two weeks, 24-7, and I managed to discover some really nice but also some bit disappointing things and facts about it. So let's dive into it. To the good ones is the price. Well, sort of good. A $150 price tag is a lot if this is really continuing to be the mini series inspired version. Last year's GTS 4 costs only 30 bucks more and seems to have a lot more features. The price is significantly higher than Redmi Watch series, the older mini editions, and even Huawei Watch GT3 could cost about the same if you buy it during a discount campaign. The Active arrives in a pack similar to most of the older Amazfit generations, and this is some nice experience. We can read what Amazfit want us to know about this watch. If you have the right motivation, it will certainly up your game in terms of fitness, but don't forget that the results depend on your own efforts and not on some random tech device. And the question is whether Amazfit make an attempt to up their game. At the first sight, this shape looks familiar. Yeah, it very much reminds of the GTS Mini series, known for offering some good features at a price tag around $100. Well, the higher price now and Amazfit's statement that it's gonna combine the GTS and the Mini features into just one model called Active for sure raise the expectations. Obviously, the construction wouldn't be something to impress, pretty much no improvement over last year's GTS Mini, and yeah, there's just one single button on the side. For the record, many competitors already go for a rotating crown, which can bring user experience on a totally different level. Usually, most of the health tracking sensors of these wearables are at the bottom, so no exception here. If we look at the tech details, we're gonna find a custom dual-core processor, a 1.75-inch AMOLED display with tempered glass protection and anti-fingerprint coating, there's a 300 mAh battery, a BioTracker PPG biometric sensor, a temperature sensor, circularly polarized GPS antenna, there's Bluetooth 5.2, removable 20mm straps, and the weight of the watch is around just 27 grams. There's something I still don't quite get. It's about the operating system, because Amazfit have announced the new Zep OS Generation 3 just recently, and it has already reached some of 2022's model. This here is Amazfit Active, which was released in the second half of 2023, and it still relies on Zep OS 2.0, which is the previous generation of the operating system, and that's a little weird. Um, and it's quite obvious that this smartwatch is lacking some really important features. For instance, the screen doesn't support auto brightness, there is no rotating crown, just a button. Well, on the other hand, we have pretty decent GPS implementation. Uh, you can make Bluetooth-related phone calls. The display looks pretty nice and bright when you set it to the maximum levels. And battery life is really good. But you see some kind of mixed feelings. Therefore, I think we should take a closer look at the software implementation and figure out whether Amazfit Active is worth the money. Well, with exception for the lack of a rotating crown and apparently somewhat outdated navigation via the swipes, the UI is very responsive and functional. The side button opens the apps list and acts as a home button as well. Swiping left and right switches between the various cards, most of which are quite beautiful. Swipe down for the quick toggles, swipe up and you're gonna get the notification list. They're interactive and you can respond via predefined answers. Customizable via the Zep app and you can use such with your native language and variety of alphabets are supported as well. 
Concerning the list of apps, there's something rather new called Readiness, which is a summary of your health status based on the measurements taken by Amazfit Active. The AI is also present. I know some of you are quite fans of this feature. You're gonna see the usual health-related tracking options, which are, again, presented in an excellent way, as usual for Amazfit. I can confirm that most of them are somewhat inaccurate. Heart rate data can detect spikes and similar. Not as good as a chest-mounted tracker, though, but it is rather among the good ones. Amazfit have deployed a slightly older set of sensors. Sleep tracking has been rather unreliable because it never really detected me being awake at night, even if my smartphone was on and it was connected to the watch via Bluetooth, which doesn't really speak good of the software at this point. If you want to improve your training habits, there's a coaching app which can be configured further by the Zep smartphone app. Note that since a few months, Zep are promoting their new added value services, which are suddenly tempting, but also making you pay some extra dollars per month. Speaking of paid features, most of the watch faces, especially the great looking ones, are now paid. Sure, there still are plenty of very good watch faces, and you can also use the alternative Amaze Faces app, which contains probably thousands of these. Installation of most is, however, going to require some patience and good understanding of Android's file system. Among the rest of the apps which are integrated by default, you're gonna see a lot which are enhancing your productivity, such as timers, calendar, task list, and many others. Even Amazon Alexa is gonna serve you in case it is enabled for your region. As for sports, the amount of tracked workouts is unnecessarily long, at least in my opinion, but chances are that you're gonna be able to practice your favorite sport and even let the watch pull some statistical data about it which is presented in the smartphone app in an even better way. A good place to verify that the GPS performance, where accuracy really matters, and, well, Amazfit Active is using a polarized antenna, which seems to make a good difference because accuracy is, in my opinion, superb. Locking GPS signal also happens very quickly, so if the GPS function is among your priorities, I think it's gonna be a good catch Although I've noticed some complaints about its performance in some of the Amazon reviews and also on Reddit. Inside the Zep app, there are multiple cards to show you in-depth heart rate analysis, sleep tracking data, blood oxygen saturation measurements and so on. I didn't find a way to measure the temperature, but I guess it may arrive as a feature at some point. If you wonder what the Aura section is about, well, it's about AI-powered relaxation and improving your vitality scores. Could be nice if you're into that kind of stuff. The watch face gallery that we mentioned a bit earlier is remarkable. And yeah, an app store. My favorite GoPro remote app for Amazfit is not present with this particular active device, but you can grab the Remotify app, which is an awesome way to control Spotify. Works with Android phones only, unfortunately. The rest of the apps are quite helpful as well, and Zep OS is currently the only one for smartwatches with decent battery life and such a wide variety of practical and useful apps. If I have to summarize the software experience, it's close to being the best in class, and Amazfit have proven that they can bring some really quality updates over time. Still, there might be some little things that you could find annoying about this watch. Thinking of the drawbacks, I'd point to the lack of automatic brightness feature, the lack of a rotating crown, the higher price tag given the lack of significant improvements over last year's generation. In the end, I have to say I'm really happy to have witnessed the rise of Amazfit as a brand. And I really hope that Amazfit Active is not the beginning of their fall, because, yeah, think about it. $150, 2024, no rotating crown, and no automatic brightness for the display, some features which are trailing, no Zep OS 3.0, and if you put it side by side with Redmi Watch 4, this clearly has the superior hardware, it's true, Amazfit have a pretty decent software ecosystem, but it still doesn't justify this fairly high price tag. So I really hope they're going to revise their pricing policy so that Amazfit Active gets its right value spot. And would be great to hear from you. Do you think this is 
kind of overpriced about the features that it has, or it's just about right, because I'm not saying it's a bad smartwatch, I'm just saying that Amazfit could have added a bit more hardware at the given price point. Well, there's a lot to talk about, so be invited. The comments are down below the video if you want to support me, my work here on the channel, or if you want to buy yourself an Amazfit Active smartwatch. Check the video description for more information. It's been great to meet you here on the channel. Hopefully you're going to stay for more, and I really would wish to see you in the next video, so make sure to be subscribed. I'm Michael, wish you a fantastic day, and hope to see you soon.